video, I'm going to give you three techniques to quickly get you playing authentic ska bass lines and give you the tools to create your own ska bass lines too. First of all, we're going to look at three classic ska songs and then I'm going to pick out the pivotal techniques that they use in the bass lines. The first bass line we're going to look at is from the song Israelites by Jamaican artist Desmond Decker and this was released in 1969. I'll play it for you first. This bass part is from the verse of the song and you can hear how it would equally work well in a reggae song. Reggae was born out of ska and the songs from this era of ska, particularly the ones coming out of Jamaica, would soon form what the reggae style is now. The main technique used in this bass line is the use of major arpeggios. Now if you look at the PDF and look at the first eight bars, all eight of those bars apart from the last bar uses arpeggios. If you haven't got the PDF, you can get it below. Um, just click the link in the description and I'll email that over to you. This song is in the key of B major, which has two flats, B flat and E flat. So we use a B flat major arpeggio. And remember, an arpeggio is root. So if we start on B flat, the sixth fret of the E string. So we've got root, and then the major arpeggio is the major third. That's fifth fret of the A string. And then the fifth, which is the 8th fret of the A string, and then the high octave. That's another B flat, and that's the 8th fret of the D string. So we've got root 3rd 5th octave. The first four bars of this bass line is over a B flat. So we've got the B flat arpeggio, and we've got root 5th 3rd root. So try that. Root 5th third root. And we've got this pattern. So with me a little bit slower. Three, four. So one, two, three, four. So the last note of the first bar comes on four and. One, two, three, four and. One, two, three, four and. And you might also notice that there's a rest on the first beat of the second bar. Now this is quite a usual technique to use in ska bass lines as well, to have that rest on beat one. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We then move to an E flat, which is the sixth fret of the A string. First of all, we'll play our major arpeggio shape. So on E flat. Okay, so then this bass line is, so again we're using root, fifth, third, just a few more notes, so eighth notes. And then we're stepping up to F, and then F. Now we can play the major arpeggio like this on F, so we start on eight. But if we want to keep our hand in a good position there, we can play so that's C there, the fifth we can play here, which is the fifth fret of the G string. So first of all, let's play the arpeggio on F, root, third, fifth, we'll play it that way. And if we look at the bass line, we've got root, root, fifth, third, root. So from the E flat, And then in the last bar, we've got a D flat major scale. So D flat's the fourth fret of the A string. And you start that with your second finger. So major scale. So it's just running through the scale. So I'll play the whole bass line for you. So we shift for that D flat and remember to land on the D flat, the fourth 
fret of the A string with your second finger. So that last line. Shift. The second bass line we're going to look at is Pressure Drop by the Maytals, and that was fronted by Toots Hibbert. This was also released in 1969, and the Maytals were a Jamaican band. There are three sections to the song, so I'll play each section for you now. Again, you might be able to hear major arpeggios in this bass line. In fact, it's comprised solely of major arpeggios. The three sections only use A flat, D flat, and E flat major arpeggios. We know the shape for a major arpeggio already, so it's just a matter of transposing those to each chord. So if we play an arpeggio on A flat, so that's full fret of the E string, and then D flat, full fret of the A string. And then E flat, 6th fret of the A string. And we just play root, 3rd, 5th, like this. That's it. That's the pattern for all the chords. Um, but what we've got here, we've got some really nice space in this bass line. So we play 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So we've got that lots of space between the first set of notes and the second set of notes of that chord. So we've actually got one, two, three, four and a half beats rest in the middle. And it also means we don't play on beat one of the second bar of each pattern as well. This is a real characteristic of scar bass lines to have this amount of space. Um, and again, if you look, there is a rest on beats one of the second fourth bar. Um, so basically the second bar of each phrase, we don't play on beat one. This space really helps to drive the bass line along and it's usual for the guitar and drums to keep the rhythm going in scar songs. So in the first pattern, we've just got A flats and D flats. and that repeats. In the second pattern we've got twice round the A flat and then to an E flat, twice round the A flat to a D flat. And you repeat that pattern as many times as you need it for the song. And in the third pattern we've got A flat, A flat, E flat, D flat, D flat, A flat. So I'll leave you now to go through that bass line. The third bass line we're going to look at is from One Step Beyond by Madness, and this was released in 1979. The original, which was released in 1964, was by Prince Buster, who was a Jamaican artist. Madness were part of the two-tone ska revival which happened in Britain at the time. This song is in C minor, and C minor is the relative minor to E flat major, which has three flats. If you want to know more about key signatures, major key signatures and their relative minors, then click this link that I'll put up here now, and that will take you to one of my other video lessons. I've also got a lesson coming out soon on the circle of fifths diagram, which you can use to work out different keys and relative minors. So make sure you subscribe to me by pressing the red button below, and also click the notification bell, and you'll get notified of all my new videos. As this song's in a minor key, some of the calls will have to play a minor arpeggio shape over. So if we look at the C major arpeggio shape first, 
C. So you'll know that shape. And the minor, we put our first finger on C, and then the minor third is there with the full finger. And then fifth octave. The first arpeggio is C minor on this. So we've got root, third, fifth, back down to third. Okay, that pattern, root, third, fifth, third. And then the next bar is F, and that's F minor arpeggio. So we just move to starting on the D string. And then back to C minor. So once on C minor, once on F minor, twice on C minor. And you repeat that whole pattern three times. So we try that with me now, and I'll count you in. One, two, three, four. Start the pattern again. And third time. And this is a really good exercise. It does get quite tiring for the fingers. You get good practice there, um, keeping one finger per fret. And if we move on, we've got a G, and this time it's a major arpeggio, so we've got so the major shape on the third fret of the E string. So root, third, fifth, third, fifth with eighth notes. Three times. And then step it down. So that's part of the C minor scale. So G, F, E flat, D and then back to C. So if we look at that second line, G major arpeggio, step down, and then we start the pattern again. After looking at these scar bass lines, the three pivotal techniques I've picked out are the extensive use of arpeggios, the use of scale patterns, and utilising a lot of space in the bass line, including not playing sometimes on the first beat of the bar. I'm now going to play a short scar backing track without bass, and I want you to have a listen and see what sort of bass lines you think you could play that have a real scar feel to them. Now listen to me playing a sample scar bass line under the same backing track. of this pattern is two bars of C, a bar of A and a bar of G. And I've written that pattern down on the second page of the PDF which you can get below this video in the description. So we're now going to put those three pivotal scar techniques into a new bass line. For the first two bars of C we're just going to use root and third to have this pattern. So C is the root and the third is E. So 
So I've taken the first two notes of the C major arpeggio and I've also left the space on the first beat of the second bar. So, so try that with me. Three, four. Again. Then we move on to the third bar and we've got an A minor here. So we're going to play root and a minor third. And the minor third is there, so if we play A, C. Now that note there can be played here, that's our usual shape. But we can also play it there, and that suits the position we're in at the moment. So A, C, A, root, root third, root. Okay, so we try it from the beginning of the bass line. One, two, three, four. A, and then G, which is the third fret. And that uses the first three notes of the arpeggio. G, B, D, root, third, fifth. So, with me, three, four. So I'll play the whole of that first line. Three, four. Okay, so so far we've used arpeggios, major and minor arpeggios, and we've kept a bit of space on the first beat of the second bar. If we move on to the next four bars, we've got this C again, so two bars of C. And what I've done there is I've used the fifth of the arpeggio, so root, root, third, fifth, third. And this next bit's the same. So we try those two bars. These are bars five and six, three, four. Again, three, four. And then down to A bind again. And then G. And I'm using a scale pattern there, just stepping down, back to the C again. So that's just using a major shape like we had in one of the other scar bass lines. So that whole bar, G, 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 F, E, D, and then back to C. So this is the second line. This gives us a typical scar bass line of eight bars long that we can use and repeat under the backing track. Now, of course, put some variations in, but it's a good idea to have a repetitive bass line that we can use to drive the song along. You've now got the three tools to go away and start creating your own scar bass lines. We've got arpeggios, scale patterns, and leaving some space, including sometimes leaving a rest on the first beat of the bar. I'll now leave the backing track running so you get a chance to practice this bass line and your own bass lines underneath it. If you want to learn other scar bass lines to get more ideas to put into your own bass lines, then I'll put a link here, click on that, that will take you to my five classic scar bass lines video lesson. Remember to download the PDF by clicking the link below in the description. That's got standard notation and tab and all the information from this lesson is in there. And also remember to subscribe to Greg Space Shed here on YouTube by clicking the red subscribe button. You might also want to head over to my website gbshed.com. I've got loads more free bass resources over there. I've got a bass beginner ebook and a free members area and much more. The link to my website and other useful links are all below again in the description. This is Greg from Greg's Bass Shed. I'll see you in the next video.